good morning. I can see I've got lots of you already. Happy Friday, or Friday, as I like to call it. Um, hope you're all okay. I've got the most amazing bead bundle to show you today. More about beads than technique today. Um, so um, I'm gonna say hello to you all before I go and show you all of our goodies. Um, just saw Janice says, good morning, Sarah. Last day before lockdown in Swansea, but it's raining. Hopefully you might get a little walk later. Um, stay safe. Good luck with everything. I hope you are okay. Um, good morning, Jan. Hi, Camille. Janet, Amelia, Jitty, Janet, another Janet. Hi, Rachel. Good morning to you all. Um, I hope you're all okay. Just seen Lucy said she's having a crystal art day. Nice bit of sparkle. Um, hope you're going to enjoy that. I knew this was going to happen. I've got both dogs here. Hello, Django. Oh, hi. <laughs> Could be one of those days. Let me shut them out. All right. He is a little bit bigger than Earl. Bit more of a bark on him, bless him. Um, John should be home in a minute, so he'll keep them quiet for me. Um, so I've got the most amazing bundle available today. Um, we've actually got um, some premium crystals. So if anyone saw on my Facebook or um, Instagram, I put up uh, this, this huge big box of crystals that we've got. And I was just kind of digging around and rifling around, putting my hand in it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, we actually sell them in 100 gram bags for £2.50, which is insane value for money and I'm going to show you how I personally make the most of them. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be one that my mum is going to, oh no sorry did his his bark made everything boom a bit, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we'll be quieter now. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make the most of them. I know it's going to be a style that my mum's going to love. So if she's watching and I'm seeing her tomorrow, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose this necklace. Um, so what I'm going to do is just quite simply loop, loop them together. Bags like these are amazing value for money because you get you just get so, um, so much volume in them, uh, which is amazing. And then I'm going to um, perfect some of our loop turning. Um, kind of what I'm known for is my loops really um, and helping people get those right so I'm gonna uh, quickly show you the website so you can hop over and get your beads um, now they aren't um, I get I get asked um, about bags like these and is the quality still nice you know are they just are they chipped are they seconds um, it's not it's basically like surplus stock so um, in the warehouse when we get down to kind of three four strands of things and it's taking up a whole peg on the wall um things like these generally get taken off um cut up and then they'll go into um like big value packs like these so they are um as the name sa uh, says premium crystal bead mixes so they are um our best quality crystals it's just that you're getting them in sheer volume um because they're kind of leftovers um and it's stuff like this that actually makes amazing gifts because when you are either selling or gifting you want it to be not too expensive but still look fantastic um 2 pounds 75 for 100 grams um, so of course the sizes the colors and everything else are completely going to vary um, I'm going to show you them uh, in real life in a moment um, and then what we've put in as well uh, are the, are the um, eye pins of various different colors um, so 30 mil is going to give you um, less wastage rather than like 50 mils um, so of course they are a little bit smaller because we're going to be using individual beads but there are so many different takes on this that you could then adapt and personalize as well so we've got the black plated gold rose and silver um amazing value um i should think we've probably got a very healthy stock of them um but obviously if you want to pop on over and have a little look sees um then you will be able to nab some of those rather quickly so this is what 100 grams is going to look like um amazing value for money oh judith is saying jango is gorgeous I know isn't he he's my my big little baby <laughs> um, this is your hundred grams now out of my hundred grams so I was using this just to prep my little uh, necklace or it's gonna be a long necklace I should say big necklace and um, this is what I've got left over as you can see you've got hundreds of beads which is amazing value for money these are the ones that I was all looping yesterday so with something like this, um, I would say because it's random, and I don't do random too, too well, and I know some of you are the same, um, if Helen's watching, I know she gets a bit OCD with stuff like I do, um, but bags like these 
encourage and help you um, to actually do random because you've got this mix and they're all crystal. So in that sense, you've got that uniformity with all the beads. It doesn't matter how you thread them on, they're gonna look fantastic. Um, I Another thing that I would also do with things like this are the crocheting. So do you remember I was crocheting with some of our metallic thread, uh, just making long necklaces. If you've got mixes of beads, these bead soups as a lot of people like to call them, then it's a great thing to do. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start creating a lovely long chain. Um, it will just be a lariat, so you can actually then pop it on, fold it over a few times, you could multi-layer it, wear it shorter, longer, whatever it might be. Um, Lucy says, great value bundle. It's insane, isn't it? It's it's amazing. Um, and there isn't a single bead I haven't used yet. Um, I do a bit of quality control with my loops when I'm making them, and if there's one of them that looks a little bit dodge, I will redo it. Um, okay, so um, in terms of kind of mass makes like these, I would tend to make it over a couple of evenings. Um, obviously, if you have more time, then that's great. Um, but here's how I would tackle it. So I'm just going to pick up individual beads and I'm going to bend them onto the pin. So it doesn't matter in any order, any process. But what I am doing is making sure that when I pick up the bead, and I bend the pin, I'm bending it in the same direction as the loop. So here you can see it's kind of going horizontally as opposed to vertically, like so, so horizontally, which means I'm gonna hold it in place, I almost just grab the end of the pin and the bead, and I'm gonna make sure that the pin bends in the same direction. That means that then when I come to actually turn the loop, and I do all of this on mass, so I, I do, one step at a time. So I will bend them all, then I'll cut them all, and then I'll loop them all. And I find it just easier um, to do it in that way, because then I'm not picking up all my tools all the time. I can just sit, and while I'm watching a bit of telly or whatever it might be, um, you can actually um, just sit and do, you know, a nice, a nice relaxing and therapeutic little process, uh, which is lovely. Um, so this is all I would do. Sit and pick up a load of random beads, and prep them on. Now I am going to link them together using a little four millimeter jump ring because actually I think it gives it a little bit more fluidity. It also gives a little bit of uniformity in between the beads and it just makes it look that little bit more professional and a little neater. And because we're just using um, these mixtures of beads, but look, you can see the crystals are all fabulous. They've got the most gorgeous cuts and because you've got all crystal, um, there are um, different shapes and sizes, there's bicones, there's teardrops, there's rondelles, there's rounds, and of course every colour under the sun. Um, you just have the most fantastic mix and I think it, um, it's really lovely to then encourage you to do these random things because it makes colour and texture work together, which sometimes... To, to try and do random is very difficult. Um, I've just been sat watching yesterday's thinking it's Friday and then Kitty said it's Thursday. <laughs> well, welcome into today's Angela, happy Friday. Um, I was hoping you'd pick that one, love the big clear one. Oh, have you, have you got your eye on a few of them? <laughs> um, I am drawn to quite a few of them. Um, Margaret says, good morning. Morning beady gang, says Jax. Um, yeah, so sometimes doing random is a little bit tricky, but this is going to give you that guidance and it will encourage you to do and i think jewelry when it is made um with with random touches with that lovely style um it can look fantastic and of course you've got the bonus that it is going to go with any outfit okay so i'm going to do um just maybe a couple more let's get a couple of big ones in there that one's maybe a little bit too big for this one only because it's so red as well um, you will also get, in some of the smaller ones, you get um, great pairs of beads. So let's go for this one because I, like um, I like the cut on that one. Uh, when it comes to actually putting them together, um, I do still do random. Um, but you've got some beautiful beads in here. Um, like, for example, this shape here I think is absolutely beautiful. It's almost like a kind of crushed cube. Um, I think it would be referred to as a, as a nugget shape. Uh, you've got some beautiful ovals as well. So I think that will probably do us for now. Um, I've still used, and I think you'll see, this is going to be a necklace that will fit over my head, and I've still got all of these beads. 
This is £2.75 worth of beads, which is just insane. Um, and my bags of pins, they come in bags of 100, I think it is. Um, 100 pieces in 30 mil, and that's £1.50. So when you think about it, I'm making this entire necklace probably for about a pound or so. And that's about it. Um, okay, so let's move these out of the way. I'm going to keep these for later. Off you go. Super. And then we'll start looping some of these, get my spare pins out of the way. Okay, a project like this, not only is it going to give you a lovely end result, but it's great just to practice turning loops. Um, a lot of the time, a, a simple design like this is going to allow you to really home in on some of those skills and just get it right. Um, question, will you be getting any more dancing snowman kits, please? Um, I am sure we probably would. Uh, I think all of our Christmas bits and pieces are going to start in November. Um, and I will ask Kitty to put that one on the list for you. Okay, so now that I've looped them all, uh, sorry, now I've bent them all, I'm going to cut them all. So I want to leave about a centimetre um, for my loops. Just make sure you hold on to those little shards that are coming off. Uh, like I said, because they are 30 mil eye pins, we're not gonna have too much wastage. Obviously on some of your smaller beads, you're cutting off that little bit more. Um, but you wanna try and keep that uniformity, keep about a centimetre. And I do find that doing all of the process at once is just so much more relaxing. Um, I don't know if you guys would tackle it and turn all of the, you know, do the whole process in one. Um, but with mass makes like these, I personally just break it all down. And I would do it little step by steps. And it was, it's really relaxing. I'd say I was probably doing it for about an hour or so to get the amount that I've got here. And then obviously another probably little half an hour. Mm, so I'd say it's a couple of hours make. Uh, in its entirety but with things like this if you find that you're just really tired and you want to I don't know relax in the evening or sit down and have a nice cup of tea and do something like this you can just sit and bend all of the beads onto the pins and um, love all that smart, uh, sparkle says Katrina I know it's gorgeous isn't it I was sat in the conservatory doing it when I was uh, doing these ones and the sun was just coming through um, and they just looked amazing now, what I will find is that when I'm turning some of these, some of them may be ever so slightly longer. So I'm going to show you how to correct that as well, because, of course, when you're not turning the loop at the same time, you don't really know how it's going to end up until we go to loop it. And there are a few little top tips to make sure that your loops are going to be absolutely perfect because when you are using it uh, to create change uh, chains like these oh the website says sold out wow that was quick um i'm pretty sure they will probably load more um i oh, i've got no way of getting in touch with anyone i don't think kitty's here because she's got a day of filming um when you are doing, uh, let's hope that someone's watching, Simon, Kitty, Molly, anybody, um, we'll see if we can put some more stock onto the website for you. Uh, would the metallic thread go through the little ones? Um, what you could probably do is put uh, some nail polish on the end. Um, I might even have a metallic thread here. Mm -hmm. I will see if I can grab it in a second. Um, but yes, it is super fine and I can see one. Hold on. Where did I just see it? Little bit of nail polish on the bottom of your metallic thread and you will get it through all the teeniest, tiniest holes. Um, so the metallic one I've got here, I've got the blue one. Are you impressed? My little box of threads, knew exactly where it was not doing too bad uh with the metallic thread it does fray help admin says Jax. <laughs> oh um i don't even know if any of them are here so i can't even ask and i'm using my phone so i can't oh the crystals are back in stock they're here <laughs> quick everyone go 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 um 
somebody uh, from the Totally, Be uh, totally Beads page is here. Thank you guys. And they are putting more stock on for you. Um, okay, so the metallic thread does fray. Um, so what you will need to do is uh, dip it in a little bit of um, clear nail polish and that will give you a really rigid finish. Um, when it has then dried, you can cut it to a little needle-like point. And you can see here, you're gonna have to cut it because even just giving it that tiny little snip has frayed it all. Um, you could probably even use an easy eye needle as well. Um, this has turned into, what is it? Uh, Kitty does like her little creation station, doesn't she? Uh, when everybody asks questions and then sees if, um, if certain techniques will work. So let's try it on an easy eye needle as well. I'll go for one of the smaller. I think you'll be absolutely fine going through them, I can tell already. So if you want to do some crocheting with it, oh yeah, look perfect, down the teeniest, tiniest ones. Okay, so if you wanna do some crocheting with this bundle, which will be absolutely amazing, um, you will be able to create a beautiful finish so you're going to thread all of your beads on just like this and um, actually so I haven't even had to use the nail polish just an easy eye needle and you'll go straight through even let's try the teeniest tiniest one yeah no problem look they're going to be gorgeous um, oh Janet says oh no I had them in my basket and they've been swiped out Janet there is more stock now so just pop back onto the product and pop that in your basket and you'll get another one um, so you would uh, thread them all on like this and then you'll do um, just a single stitch. Um, I might even have, I'll, sh I'll finish off showing my loops and then I probably even have a crochet hook to hand. So I'll show you, um, I'll show you that if I get um, a second. Remind me, Camille. Um, the Dancing Snowman kits will be back early November. Yeah, Christmas is gonna start for us early November. That's when all the bits and pieces will be ready to go. Love the crystal beads. I made four crisscross bracelets yesterday and more colours on the beading mat today. Um, I think I saw that. Did you post a picture, Mina? I think it was like a, the whole map full of them uh, in the group. Uh, waiting for the new USB, so trying to save my money if I can. Um, yes, that's coming too. Um, Kitty is uh, filming for that today. So uh, exciting things in the making. Okay, so back to turning our loops. Uh, now that you know you can crochet with it as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is hold my uh, pin down at the bottom using my thumb as a stopper bead and my pin, I point up to the ceiling. Now there is no right or wrong way to turn it, hold it, form it, bend it. It's whatever works for you, however it's comfortable for you. I always face pin up to the ceiling and I roll away from me. So the grasp that you're gonna have, you're gonna start with a flat hand, you're gonna grab on, and then I turn it away from me, and I only do about 90 degrees, let go, and come back flat again. And sometimes even the tiniest little rotation. So you want to make sure that you're about half centimeter down from the tip of your pliers. That first one is just hooking the wire over. And then it's that little, little nudgy nudgy each time. Wow, they look pretty perfect. That's gonna go into my pile. So holding the bottom, stabilizing, holding the bottom with your um, Sarah, the link to the crystals is in the description of this video. Um, hopefully that will help, but I'm guessing someone is watching as well, so um, they could probably pop that in for you too. Um, actually, if I just paste on here, I've probably still got it. There you go, it's on its way. I've just commented on it for you. Um, so, thumb on the bottom, finger stabilising the pin, pin up to the, uh, sorry, stabilising the bead, pin up to the ceiling, and then that first one, is half a rotation, let go, turn back flat, and then I just do little, little nudges, and I can actually then see, and I can feel when the pin is going to turn and, and actually reach the bead. And because at the very beginning, I made sure that when my bead was uh, horizontal, I bent the pin horizontal, I know that both my loops are gonna face in the same direction, because with your chains like these, Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you want to be a bit showy-offy, um, your work is completely exposed. Uh, so don't be scared by that, um, but it will help you perfect your pin. So you can see all of my pins are facing the same way. 
and then if I rotate that round slightly, I've got that lovely round jump ring in the center as well. So it's just all those lovely circles and loops. So it does mean if you've got a few um, a few dodgy ones, so when I start linking them together, we'll do a bit of, uh, a bit of quality control. Um, and then I can always tell because I can see. So my line of vision, I can actually see just when the pin starts to come into contact with the bead. So I actually know if there is gonna be any gap. So what I want is the loop to be sat directly on top of the bead. No wibble wobble, you haven't got any of the pin visible in between, so that bead is gonna move. You want it up nice and tight. And that also means that if I've got any that are, that are a little bit longer, and I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna see if I can do it a bit candid, um, but so that you can see the actual process of it. So it's that rotation round first of all, which is turning the loop first, and then those tiny little nudges, I can then just tell, and obviously I've been doing it for a long time and, and you will begin to um, see by eye the more you do it, I can tell whether that loop is gonna be big enough to then close off so that it will sit on top of the bead. If it looks like you're gonna have some leftover wire, just nudge the bead down your pliers ever so slightly because that's going to make the hole a bit bigger, which will then mean you're using that leftover wire. So you can actually then, um, you, can, you can do little corrective movements at this stage. Now what I find is because I've been looking at this and I'm looking down on it, can you see that it's gone a little bit wonky? doesn't sit quite straight and that's because my hands are all a bit twisted and bent and um, the amount of times uh, I've taught people in workshops and you see them kind of sat there and their their wrists are rotated round and their their shoulders are coming out of the socket and it, it just it's not comfortable do it nice and easy and simply for you um, and because I was a little bit um, cack handed and I was kind of twisted that reflects on your loops as well um morning sarah could you tell me please with the facebook will these facebook lives finish at the end of october no they won't um we're still here um so we do have um as you may know we've got a bead club starting um we will have facebook lives but they won't be as frequently so we're, we're not gonna um continue to do them every single day um <laughs> Natalie says, morning Kelly. Oh, Natalie, I think you were late. Um, you missed Django as well. He uh, jumped up <laughs> at the very start. Sorry, you might have to turn the volume down at the very beginning. Um, so the Facebooks will um, will be cut down ever so slightly, but we'll still be here. We've loved um, building our gorgeous little community of you all here. Um, and we're not going to stop that. We will still be going. Uh, it's like you're playing a tune. Uh, it, oh, it's like you're trying to play out of key when you know the tune is that when you're when you're rotating round yeah so you want to make sure that you've got those lovely loops the best way to do that for me is to keep all of those angles nice that little bit of correction as you get that visibility this one looks like it might be a little bit longer so we'll see how we go right here we go so can you see that my my uh, loop isn't, if I move my finger out of the way, you will see that slight gap. My loop isn't directly above the bead and this is fractional, fractional, but it will make a difference. So what you can do, if that is the case, you can either at this stage, and this is what I would do immediately, um, is cut down ever so slightly i'm talking about millimeters and you might just think i'm being really fussy um but it will give us um, a much better finish so in fact you can even see the piece that i've cut off there it's tiny but it will make a big difference. Oh, Janet, you've got your beads, yay. I love Totally Beads. My order went through, looking forward to get some sparkly, shiny things from my postie. Oh, good, well done. Um, now, by just cutting off that tiny little amount, I now know that my loop is gonna sit perfectly and look at how much neater that looks. So much neater and it's gonna look much better in my necklace. Um, what you can also do, rather than cutting off 
that tiny, tiny amount is just nudge it slightly further down your pliers. Uh, the problem, oh yay, uh, Marie says, whoop, whoop, got my sparkles. <laughs> well done. Oh, I'm glad I'm bringing a bit of sparkle to everybody's Friday. Um, Leslie says, I can't thank you and Kitty enough for your daily get togethers. It has definitely kept me sane. Love to watch you all. Oh, thank you, Leslie. Charlotte says, finally got it. Yay. Um, oh, I'm, uh, um, I'm so glad that you guys have loved the Facebooks. Kitty and I love doing them as well. Obviously it is a lot of work and a lot of time and it's been a big old commitment doing it every day since I believe the 23rd of March we started. It was that first day of lockdown. Who, who's ever going to forget that date? Um, I know that some of you are going back into lockdown um, and don't worry, we're here every day at 10 o'clock. I'm sure it is, um, it's, it's such a minimal amount of time um, to kind of sit on here for an hour or so each day when you are in all day every day. Um, but to some of you, I know it makes the world a difference. We've got the most beautiful community of ladies and gentlemen who um, really encourage each other. And for an hour or, you know, 45 minutes, half an hour, um, it just gets you, gets you socialising a little bit. Virtually, of course, because it's the only way we can do it. Um, but do go and join our Totally Handmade page as well, um, because all day, every day, there are people on there. So if you're ever feeling lonely, a bit down, a, you know, you don't know what to do with yourself, a bit lost, get on there and just look at really pretty things and talk to like-minded people, um, because um, I think you will find that will probably lift your mood. Um, it's not a salesy page, you know, you're not going to see posts on there all the time and things have got to sell and everything else. It's it's a community. Um, so hopefully um, that will just give you that little bit of interaction uh, with like minded people. Um, Angela says it certainly kept me saying I was away from home for about four months and I don't think I could have coped without you all. Oh, Angela, thank you. That means so much. And well done you. Um, I ordered a few bags, said Lucy, didn't want to be left out. <laughs> So much for crystal art today, Lucy. Um, well done, that is hard. Oh, are you talking about all your work? Oh, um, Natty, I think that's why you were a little bit late, but welcome to the end. Um, do you turn the ring facing the same way at each other end? Um, I, I turn my loops away from me, but you could turn them towards you as well. So if you want to turn them towards you, um, you would need to rotate it round because you're going to be going back up on top of the bead. So when I'm turning it away from me, of course, you're rolling your pin on top of the bead. So if you want to roll towards you, you absolutely can. Um, but start with a slightly rotated uh, wrist. So I'm going to come in this way because I'm going to bring it back to normal. Um, if you start, if you start already twisted, there's no more twist to give, if that makes sense. So in this case, I'm going to start with my hand upside down, like so, holding it upside down. And then I'm going to rotate up and towards me. And again, you can do those little nudgy movements. Now, I'm not as great turning it towards me, but it's still a loop. It's still a loop. It's still functional. OK, so um, I think we've probably covered um, through the months. We've been doing lots of kind of 101s on turning your loops. So um, I'm hoping you all know, oh, well, I'm hoping none of you have shepherd's crooks by now. Um, you've all got these lovely, beautiful um, loops to connect on. What I am also making sure, because I am going to connect these with a jump ring, I am also making sure that all of my loops are perfectly shut. So sometimes you can leave them a little bit open like this. Let me get rid of the background so that focuses in. Sometimes you can leave them a little bit open um, because you then know that you're going to take your flat nose pliers, you're going to open it up, connect it onto something, and then when you close it, you can make sure that it has that perfect closed connection. But with these, because I'm going to connect them with jump rings, my step here is the be all and end all of it. I'm not going to touch these loops again. So this is your time to make them perfect when you are just sitting and actually forming the loop. 
So just make sure that the two ends are meeting and you've got that lovely close connection. Okay, connecting it to the actual chain. Uh, I am going to, oh, I sometimes have shepherd's crooks depending on how my fingers work. Oh, yeah, because it's the grip on the pliers, isn't it? So sometimes if you've got sore fingers that day, um, then it's a little bit tricky. I get it, I get it too. Um, if you find that you do have more shepherd's crooks, um, and by shepherd's crooks, so for those of you who have missed some of our other videos, by shepherd's crooks, I mean when you turn a loop, it has that kind of shape. So you can see we've got that longer, straighter section. So it looks like a little shepherd's crook. Um, if you have that, it's because your pin, when you have added on your bead, let's do one. When you've added on your bead and you go to ro um, rotate and turn your pin, you have a little bit of wire sticking out at the top, which means that that isn't going to give you um, a perfect loop. That is going to give you a straight bit of wire because of course we're not curling it. So, but if you go a little bit lower down your pliers, because of course up here, um, you don't have very much of a depth of your plier to actually hold on to. It's quite thin. So of course the surface area, trying to get hold of that, I know if you hear this noise, I won't be able to do it now. I know a lot of you will get that kind of, because you're trying to hold on to it and it's not quite gripping. Go down a little bit lower into your pliers. Now I can still see my wire there. I can still see it. So I'm not holding it in my pliers so that I can't see it. Visually, I've got that tiniest amount at the top. So I know it's there, but I've just got that little bit more of the broader nose on my pliers to actually hold on to. So at least you've got those. Okay, connecting them together, I'm going to take my round nose pliers and my flat nosed, and then I'm going to uh, link them together with a jump ring. Um, oh, Jane, a question to everyone else. I have seen different coloured jump rings. Can you get different colour pins as well? Yeah, so um, they're on the page. We, um, as Totally Beads, have six different colours of every single finding. So your clasps, your ear wires, um, be that fish hook, we've also got posts, we've got clip-ons, um, we've got head and eye pins, jump rings. Whoa, what else have we got in those little sections? Um, the ball end head pins, head pins of every size. Um, we have them all in six different colours. So we do... Black, rhodium, bright silver, gold, champagne gold, rose gold, bright silver. Oh no, that's it, that's the six. So rhodium, black, rose gold, champagne gold, bright gold, and silver. I think that's the ones. All six of them. Uh, so have a little look on the website, go to findings and you'll see it all in there. But also on the um, section today for Facebook that has your crystals in there, we've got four different colours of the uh, pins, I think. In fact, I've got them here, so I'll show you. Um, that is the black plated. That's the rose gold. That is the gold. And I'm using the silver. And of course, you will then get clasps and everything to match as well now my necklace is just going to be a pop over the head one so i don't need it um but of course you can add on anything there as well so i've also got four millimeter jump rings and what i'm going to do is take my flat nose pliers and the slit of my jump ring is up at the top my flat nose pliers i'm going to hold in my right hand and that's going to take the whole length of the um jump ring itself and then my round nose pliers because the tip is so fine, I don't like putting too much stress on the jump ring. So I'm going to turn it lengthways. And that way, I'm opening up the entire jump ring. I'm not putting too much stress on any part of my necklace, of, of the pin, sorry. And it's still giving me that lovely finish. Now, I will when I close it, but I'm not... When I then close it, my grip is with my left. So I'm not putting the force on that tiny bit of my plier and then pushing it into my ring. I am only using it to hold on. Um, my flat nose plier is then the one putting the force on it. I hope that makes sense. 
or Maria you are. Sorry guys, I have to catch up later. Stay safe, my friends, and you, my lovely. Take care. Question, if I wanted to make my own eye pins uh, out of wire to make this necklace, what size wire would you recommend? Um, I would say... I would say a 0.6 or a 0.8. Um, the reason I question it is because if it's going to be a lariat, um, a lot of the time they're under a bit more stress because um, you will pull them a bit more um, as you twist them into various different sizes as well. So you want that you want that wire to be nice and strong and hold shape. But also with some of the beads that you've got in here, there are some small beads. So you don't really want to go too fine either. Um, of course, when you then pull on it, that's going to open up. Um, so I would say 0 0.6, 0 0.8, um, I reckon that would probably do you. If you want to go and have a little look on our Facebook page, you could go back and have a look at a uh, wrapped loops tutorial. Um, so, um, the wrapped loops will give you a very secure finish. Um, if you are making your own pins. And I always do that out of wire, um, and I would do that out of a 0 0.6 wire. That, uh, a wrapped loop, is just going to give you that extra security and they're not going to come undone. Um, that would be my recommendation. So if you want to make your own, do wrap loops and do it in 0 0.6. Otherwise, 0 0.8 if you are just going to uh, loop them, just as a normal pin. Okay, so the hardest bit with this is stopping yourself from picking up a pattern. <laughs> so I've now got this lovely um, this lovely section and uh, mass supply of my wrapped loops and I'm linking them together so I'm opening my jump ring I'm adding on the link from the necklace chain that I have already created and then I am just picking up a bead and connecting it on closing that jump ring making sure I can feel the two ends rub together um, oh Angela says she did the wrap necklace and she loved it yeah that is one of uh, my favorite techniques as well I do love a loop maybe because I'm a bit loopy um, so I'm closing all of these off properly now and as you can see the chain is growing now I'm not worried at all and for me that's quite a big deal i'm not worried at all about any of the colors i pick up any sizes shapes it does not matter the more random that these pieces look the better okay oh, hear him crying it's because his dad's just pulled up john's just got home so um the dogs are the dog's getting a bit excited um okay so um so although it sounds like he hurt himself i promise it's not it's just sheer excitement um opening these up and I'm just going to pick up random as random as I can go so um, sometimes the more contrasting the color the better but just try not to think about it too much um, and I promise because the beads are so gorgeous you are just going to get the most amazing result without even trying uh, which is really really lovely um, and then you're just going to loop them all together and we'll end up with a gorgeous necklace. Um, I am going to finish this off as the day goes on, looping these together, and I'm pretty sure this will be gifted to my mother when she turns up tomorrow. I haven't seen her for, goodness, about a month and a half, and for us, that was a long time. Uh, so I will see her tomorrow, so I'll give her a nice little prezzy. Um, right, I'm just gonna see if I can find a crochet hook for you, Camille, um, so that... Wow, would you look at how organised my cupboards are. Straight into the toolbox. Um, I'm going to find a nice little thin one, if I can. What is the thinnest I've got in here? Bingo. Okay. So another way that you can use these beads, obviously, um, your loops are a gorgeous way of doing it. And you do get that fluidity. And when you then put this on, it's going to go with absolutely any outfit, which is fab um with your crocheting um to be honest i could make a nice long lariat necklace out of all of these beads that we've looped and i've still got all of these and um, we can crochet with these so for two pound 75 we can get two of these necklaces um which are pretty statement necklaces i have to say okay so we tested the easy eye needle on the metallic thread i find the metallic thread is the best one for crocheting Again, try to be random with your colours if you can, and that is going to give you um, the best finish. 
Um, with your crocheting, I have found um, that the, the biggies, the big, big beads um, are not great for them, uh, only because it just gives you a little bit more of a visible loop. Um, but if you like that style, that's fine. Have a little play with crocheting. If it goes wrong, you can always undo it, um, which I think is um, one of the bonuses of doing it as well. Um, you can always undo. Okay, so you will thread on all of your beads. I found that to do um, a lariat, so again, it will go over your head. Um, I wonder if I still have, I did some amazing Swarovski crochet pieces that I was selling, but I think I sold them all. <clears throat> um, I either sold them all or my mum has them all. Um, and the crochet was really long. It was a, um, a really long chain, I haven't got any left. It was a really long chain and you could knot it, um, you could uh, wrap it round so you could have a, um, a tiered necklace as well. Um, and I found that I did um, about a metre for the, uh, no, sorry, about half a metre for those, um, which gave me a lovely long length, but thread on more beads than you really need. <clears throat> and then at the very start, uh, we're just gonna create a loop like so. Take your crochet hook and pop it in. Now I can't crochet other than doing this. This is the only way I've learned to crochet. Um, so what you will do is bring a bead up, bring your thread around the back, hold on to that bead and pull it through. So it's um, a single or a chain stitch. One of, the, one, of those, um, one of those terms are American and I can't remember which one it is. Um, I'm sure some of you crochet so you will tell me. Um, a single um just a single stitch so you're just going to pull it through and bring it up so you bring your beads up around the back hold on to it and pull it through and i do tend to um keep my tension reasonably tight on it uh, just because that is my preferred look keeping these beads with your left hand so my good old spare fingers are coming into play again keeping um keeping the um beads trapped because i'm holding on to it here so i use my uh, my pinky and my ring finger just to stop those from falling down and i'll use my index finger and my thumb to uh, bring a bead up pull that through and then hold on to it as it stops so down at the bottom pull it through and what this will give you, and you can get into a into a lovely little swing of things when you when you get going. My first couple of minutes, I'm a bit fingers and thumbs because I'm just getting used to it again. But as you get into the routine of it, it does come together really nicely. And as you can see, the randomness just sits beautifully and they look so nice when they are then worn so it's just that single stitch chain stitch however however you want to refer to it as um, and again it's going to encourage you to do random because you're just going to thread them on and they just look beautiful um okay so i think that's our sun for today um your amazing bundle of be beads i'm so glad they loaded more stock on and hopefully you are all managing to get your hands on them um do share your pictures as well because um i love seeing what you end up making with them and of course because the beads are so random you're all going to end up with something that's going to look completely different so i can't wait to see what you come up with um i'm going to finish my necklace wherever I've just put it. How can I lose something that's right in front of me? Um, I will finish it for my mum for tomorrow. Ah, here it is. I'll finish it for my mum tomorrow and I'll share a little picky. Um, because I know she loves wearing, she loves wearing colour. Oh, single crochet is USA, chain stitch is UK. Thank you. So it's just a simple chain stitch. So it's super, super, super easy. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to be long enough that you could do a long layer and then a short layer as well. So um, she can pop it on and wrap it round. Um, looks really lovely, but I'd have to get some miracle beads in there too. Oh yes, Joe, you would. Um, the miracle beads will look gorgeous in there. And of course that is then gonna reflect some of those beautiful colors in the mixes as well. Um, so glad you enjoyed today. Thank you so much um, for all the little chit chat. I hope you all stay safe. I know some of you are going back into lockdown. Stay safe, we're here every day, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, it will cut down a little bit in November, but we've got a good few weeks left yet. <laughs>
Um, love to you all. Stay safe. I am with you tomorrow morning as well, 10 o'clock. I will see you then. Take care, everyone. Bye.